Everyone, I just saw 10 Cloverfield Lane. I just got home, I sat down, and I have to tell you something. This movie kicks ass. One of the best movies that I've seen in a long time. One of my favorite films of the 2010 decade so far. Of course, I might be a bit biased considering how much I love the original movie that came out in 2008. A lot of people didn't like the shaky cam. I loved it. I loved everything about that movie. Every little detail. Things that you just don't catch on the first viewing. And I have no doubt that there will be things that I find out with repeated views of 10 Cloverfield Lane. It's a fantastic movie. Go see it, but there might be some spoilers in this video. I sat in all, like after the movie ended, and I sat there and I said, you know what? I'm going to type out 10 reasons why I love 10 Cloverfield Lane. It makes sense, right? It was practically asking for it, as good of a film as this is. J.J. Abrams, Bad Robot Productions, Dan Trachtenberg, and his directorial debut doing a fantastic job of just highlighting suspense, like hitting a certain nerve and just making you feel what that character is feeling, the primal fear that is built up inside of them. I only allowed myself to see the very first teaser trailer for this movie and never saw anything again. I wanted to go into this cold and I was so, so elated and surprised that I got one of the best movies that I've seen in a long time. Just letting you know now, there may be some spoilers in this video, so if you don't want to know anything about plot points, I'm going to try to be as vague as possible, but if you don't want any details at all, you were like me, you wanted to go in cold, definitely click away now, go see the movie, and come back and let me know what you think about my points. Let's go ahead and kick this thing off with number 10. I wanted to note that these are in no particular order, but I'm going to start with Mary Elizabeth Winestead, the main female lead in this movie, an actress that you might recognize from a film like Final Destination 3. She had a great performance there, and she had a phenomenal one here. She knocked it out of the fucking park, a home run. You could feel what she felt. You saw the decisions and the fear in her eyes, the emotions running through her. Is she exactly what she wanted to do in every scene? You could feel just everything about that character and you could relate to her maybe what you would do in that scenario. And I think that being locked in a bunker after having a traumatic car accident and then waking up to someone like John Goodman having you captive basically in your nuclear waste bunker, yeah, it could be a bit overwhelming. But what I like about this is that in most suspense and horror films, they cast the female lead as just being an idiot, doing these stupid things like, why would you do that? Why would you go there? Why would you say that? No, Mary Elizabeth Weinstein, aka Michelle in this film, just does the right things at the right times, makes very smart maneuvers, and knows what she has to do in order to stay alive at all times. Badass! 10 Cloverfield Lane has a lot of hype to live up to coming off of Cloverfield, one that had a huge viral marketing campaign, and of course, that was no stranger once again here, even though I just ignored it for the most part, could not pay any attention to it because, like I said, wanted to go into it cold. But this movie went to a smaller scale rather than trying to make it more and more grandiose and epic and over the top. You feel the confinement of being trapped in a bunker in a post-apocalyptic type world. You're being told that basically everything out there is dead. You are confined here. Don't go outside and breathe the air because you will die. And you feel that pressure. You're on a much smaller scale here. You're not running around in New York City like you were in the first movie where you felt like you were in it. And there's no shaky cam this time. You're looking at actual camera angles, rotating cameras. You're not just seeing HUD the whole time. But even though I did love that aspect of the first movie, I like that they went in a totally different direction. It's daring, it's bold, and somehow they kept this movie under wraps, going under the title Valencia when it was in production. In fact, the actors and actresses weren't notified that the movie was called 10 Cloverfield Lane until after Star Wars The Force Awakens came out and that trailer was attached to it. John Goodman is Howard in this film. Terrifying, but also helpful. 
Hero or villain? That's another thing that I love about the movie. There's so many different portraits that are painted of this man. He gets a little bit more lighthearted once you get to know him. Hey, maybe he actually is doing you a favor. He's keeping you alive down here. He's keeping the other character Emmett alive as well. He's got food. He's providing you with shelter. Clearly there's something going on out there that you don't know about and you've seen it firsthand for yourself now. So is he good or bad? But then he pulls out some Walter White Breaking Bad shit and just goes off the wall crazy and gives one of the best performances that I have ever seen this man in. There is no doubt that John Goodman is an extremely talented actor, but this is just impressive. <laughs> Some subtle humor works its way into this, and you actually feel the tension. It feels like it's building, and you don't know if you should be laughing or if you should be terrified because, hey, you're joking with John Goodman, aka the character Howard here, and you don't know how he's going to react to whatever you say, but there's a scene whenever they're playing a board game that just made me chuckle, and then a couple of interactions between Emmett and Michelle in the film, and it's not necessarily something that you would see here. Some of these movies take themselves so, so seriously that they couldn't slide in a joke or two here and there, but I like that this movie had that edge. Minimalism, bare bones, three characters, three outcomes. Who do you care about most? All of these characters are doing things in a very small environment, and things aren't flashy, things aren't showy, these aren't actresses and actors putting on a facade trying to convince you that there's just so much panic and they're terrified and they can't control their emotions. No, we get characters that have a light backstory, we know a little bit about them, enough to care about them, but things aren't overblown and you can airbrush the effects on all you want. I'll take movies like this with real relatable characters in a terrifying scenario all day long. I love the unexpected turn of events and the end of this film. You don't see some of the stuff coming and then it all just starts flying at you left and right. One guy does this, one guy does that. The turn of events, getting away from the captor, going outside and finding out what is the truth here. I love the fact that things just all of a sudden go from big and intense to just out of this world phenomenal. You don't know what's going on, but you are petrified along with this character. Things are confined most of the movie, but once we get out of that bunker with Michelle, holy shit, it's a whole new world and you're terrified all over again. Maybe you've gotten away from something, but you're into something bigger. The monster in this film, because I'm not going to go into detail on exactly what I think that might be, is just so well done. And I like the fact that even though a lot of this film was very limited and very minimal, and I love that about it. Go big or go home. That was 10 Cloverfield Lane for you, and I love that. I acknowledged this earlier, but I love the imagery used and the realistic view of panic and terror just painting the fear on these characters' faces. The director, Dan Trachtenberg, did a phenomenal job pulling that out of his actors and actresses. Here, we actually see the dialogue making sense. They're not just saying one-liners that just feel like something that you would see in a movie. You actually feel like people are trying to figure something out. The fear in their eyes. It's so real. And that's what makes this movie so unnerving is the fact that you actually feel like you're in this bunker with Michelle, Emmett, and Howard. And what are we going to do? Are we going to be able to escape? Are we going to figure things out? Is he telling the truth? Is he not? Mm, so good. I'm a big Bear McCreary fan, and when I found out that he composed the score for this film, I was 110% on board. In fact, I was extremely looking forward to that once I found out that aspect of Tim Cloverfield Lane. We see Bear McCreary painting bare bones scenarios in some points, adding just enough texture to know that something just isn't right. It's unsettling. You're sitting there with an uneasy feeling in your chest. like. Something's about to happen. Even if nothing does happen, you still feel like somebody's looking over your shoulder or something's about to happen. And you see these intense scenes 
where a knife is just like right there and the music that goes right along with it just fits perfectly. It matches the intensity and I know that this is something that can be extremely well done in many, many movies. That's a compliment that I could give to a lot of people, but I just thought it was so well done and scenes like where Mary Elizabeth Winestead is crawling around in the ducks looking for answers, looking to escape, and then just this intense scene that goes down with Howard in this movie, just, just very, very chilling the way that he composed this movie. It could go from that light tension that you feel to just full on attack mode, just like that. And it did a great job of not feeling too jarring, but it also helped add a sense of fear to this movie, even though I don't really classify it as a horror film. This score just really helped carve out the tension and really added a lot of mood to some of these scenes. The illusions, use your illusion. I love that the directors and the writers did such a great job of doing that here. A little bit of foreshadowing here and there is necessary for a film like this. And it's not maybe necessary or required, I should say, but it's expected in terms of a movie that I'm gonna love down the road. You want little Easter eggs and you don't wanna be beat over the head with facts that are just so obvious or else they have to give you dialogue or they have to give you a narrative running down exactly why this might have happened. They show things, maybe briefly, maybe on there for a few seconds, but they leave it to the imagination for you to figure out. And that is a wonderful and beautiful thing in modern cinema. Thank you. I know I'm not the only one that noticed Howard saying something about the alcohol being left in the car before he locked her inside and would not go back out there. And then of course, that alcohol came in very handy later in the film. Finally, we have the mystery. Just what is it that connects the dots between Cloverfield and 10 Cloverfield Lane? At the end, we get a really interesting shot of something that reveals the address of this film, why it was called that most likely. But just what is it? I know fans are gonna bunk this, find out exactly what was going on. I don't necessarily have a full-fledged theory on it yet, but I know that there's a few things that I could see tying it in. Even if it isn't set in the same fictional universe, there has to be a reason why this title was attached to the movie. And something about that just curiosity, that itch is really getting to me and making me love it and want to see it again right now. I know I don't talk movies on this channel too often, but I would like to more if you guys are willing to be interested and give me a chance whenever it comes to discussing and reviewing movies. My movie reviews are always my least viewed videos. Hmm, sad face. I would review them more often if you guys were interested. So let me know what you thought of this video. Share it with a friend. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not already because friends don't let friends go unsubscribed. Do me a favor, hit the like button while you're here, show support for the channel, and I'll plan on seeing you guys very soon right here on Beyond AR TV.